In this video, I'm going to show you 11 common problems new potters run into when centering. My simple and easy to follow solutions to fix each one. Plus, a bonus tip on centering. Hi, Marie here from Pottery Crafters, giving you tips, tools, and techniques to help you create beautiful pottery. One of the most important parts of throwing on the wheel is getting that clay centered. Some can catch on right away, while others may struggle. This video will help with that. The good news is, the more you do it, the better you get at it. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Let's run through all 11 problems right now. Number one, selecting the wrong clay. If you're struggling with your clay and it feels like sandpaper, you may be using clay that's better suited for hand building than throwing. Technically, you can use any kind of clay for throwing on the wheel. But for beginners, some clays can be stiffer and harder on your hands while others can be too soft. Stoneware is a good type of clay to start with. I found Amico Stoneware Buff 46 works the best for me. It's more forgiving on the wheel and holds up pretty long. It's one of my favorite clays. Number two, your clay isn't wedged properly. You'll have a hard time centering if you don't wedge your clay properly. And believe me, I've tried getting away with this. I found the clay is more difficult to center because the moisture is not consistent throughout the ball of clay. Wedging is just as important as getting your clay centered. And I have an in-depth how-to video on the potter's most popular ram's head wedge in the video up above. Number three, your elbows are up in the air. When I started centering, I could hear the instructor say, Marie, your elbows are up in the air. Well, how'd they get there? It's funny, when you're concentrating on getting this ball of clay perfectly centered, you tend to forget about what the other body parts are doing. Keeping your arms anchored to your legs or the side of your body will give you more control over the clay. Also, make sure you're using the heel of your hand at seven to eight o'clock position and your wrist is bent and your back is straight. Number four, not having enough water on your clay. If your clay feels dry against your hands, you're not using enough water. You can scoop some water up and sprinkle it over your clay, or you can take a sponge, get it soaked, and hold it like this in your hand in the karate chop position then slowly squeeze the desired amount of water on your clay. As soon as you feel the clay getting dry, give it a little squeeze. This technique is great because you don't have to take your hands off the clay as often. Number five, your wheel is moving too slow. When your wheel is going too slow, it feels like your clay is moving you around more than you are moving it. When you speed up the wheel, you have better control over your clay. You want to speed up at least to medium high. I found highest works best for me. Like that. Number six, an air pocket is trapped in your clay. Now, I'm not talking about tiny air bubbles. I've run into those many times, and they didn't affect my centering or throwing. If the air bubble is big enough, your clay will never center because the air is lighter than clay and will continuously throw your clay off center. If this happens, just 
take your clay off the wheel and wedge another piece. To avoid air pockets, you can make sure your clay is rounded and not flat on the bottom when you put it on the wheel. If it's flat, the chance of getting air stuck in between the wheel and your clay goes way up. Also, make sure you're wedging your clay properly. If you don't, you could actually be folding air pockets into your clay instead of taking them out. Number seven, the mushroom and volcano effect. While centering your clay, make sure you're not creating a mushroom shape. This can create a pocket where slip, water, and air can get trapped and throw your clay off center. If it starts to look like a mushroom, you want to cone up your clay a little bit, then push down with the karate chop position on the side and keep your anchor hand firm so you don't form the mushroom. If your clay starts to look like a volcano, air, water, and slip can get trapped on the top also. Use one hand to brace the side and karate chop with the other hand on the top until the volcano goes away. Make sure you don't cover the hole with clay. Number eight, your clay is too hard. Somewhere along the line, it got dried out. It's important to make sure that there are no holes in your bag. Also, when preparing your clay balls for throwing, make sure you keep them covered with a damp rag or put them inside a plastic bag until they're ready to be used. You can try slicing your clay in sections, spraying some water on it and wedging it really good. Or just grab another ball of clay and let the hard clay dry out all the way and recycle it. I have a video on an easy way to recycle bone dry clay if you're interested. Number nine, the clay is too wet. You may manage to get it centered, but it's not going anywhere. This clay is now too mushy to make anything. Either the clay started out that way or you added too much water while trying to get it centered. You can try and wedge some of the excess moisture out or just grab a new ball of clay. Number 10, pushing too hard on your clay. Instead of applying even pressure, I was pushing way too hard and continuously throwing my clay off center. Make sure you apply even pressure and not push too hard. Keep your Anchor hand steady. Like that. Number 11. Your clay goes off center every time you take your hands off. Apparently, clay does not like it when you move too fast. The good news is, there's an easy way to prevent this problem. Slow is the way to go. As a general rule, whenever you're removing your hands from the clay, do it slowly. 
you can also slow your wheel down all the way and take your hands off. Here is the bonus tip I promised you. This came in real handy when I struggled getting my clay centered. Use your modeling tool to double check. Take the pointy end of your modeling tool, place it gently against your clay, hold your modeling tool steady with both hands, keep it in one spot, then slowly turn the wheel If you have a line only on one side, you know you're off-center and where. Cone up your clay a little. And press back down. Take your modeling tool, press it gently against your clay again. When you see a thin line going all the way around, you know you're perfectly centered and you can proceed to play with your clay. Before centering becomes second nature for you, there's a lot to think about from making sure you're in the correct position to the right clay. There's a link in the description below for my favorite clay picks, including the Amico Stoneware Buff 46 that I've been using throughout this video. If you have any recommendations or any other tips or ideas for future videos, please feel free to post those in the comment section below. Some of the best tips and feedback come from you. Also in the comments section are more show notes and pottery making info. Click here to go to my other video about wedging clay and for my other pottery making videos. Remember, progress over perfection and keep making that beautiful pottery.